Hey guys, what's up? Salam alaikum. I didn't want to go live today, but there was something that I came across and I just couldn't hold myself. And, you know, I was just um, spending five days. I came back to my apartment. I have a ton of work to do, but I just couldn't wait. And I have to react to one video that I have seen. So I want you guys to react to the video with me because it is truly delusional. And it's about the new president of the European Parliament. And uh, I haven't seen the video, by the way. I just saw like a clip, and I thought like this will be a good, good, uh, good thing to figure, to react to. So I'm gonna share my screen. Let's just do the live stream. You guys can ask questions. But anyways, this is not a typical live stream. I just want to record it for the YouTube. So let me share the screen. Oh yeah. All right. So guys, let's go. As many as we can to President Metzola, but you haven't, if you minutes so first of all congratulations on your election you are the you. third female president of the european parliament and also the youngest ever what does all this mean to you well first of all it's a great honor uh, and a privilege to have been uh, entrusted with a big responsibility from my colleagues uh, just three weeks ago feels like much longer than uh, than these three weeks uh, it was also a message that uh, in this uh, parliament in this campaign you had a number of women running for this uh, post whereby this institution said it was about time uh, it's been uh, 20 years since a woman headed this post and what i said uh, in my introductory speech that i will do everything to ensure that no more 20 years will pass for there to be uh, another woman But all right so that was just the beginning. Um, now she's going to get into a lot of more details. Uh, but thank you guys for watching, by the way. It's pretty late. So um, I'm just recording it. So hopefully it's going to go on YouTube tomorrow. But uh, it's really important to look at this stuff because uh, nobody actually understands how European Union works. And since I'm in Europe and I'm a Muslim, I care about this stuff. And I used to study European politics and studies. And this woman embodies everything wrong with the European institutions and their delusion uh, and disconnect from population. And people love it. People thrive on the, this rhetoric that she's presenting. So let's see what she has to say. I haven't seen the full video. So this is going to be a long live stream, guys. So if you're not up for it, don't stay up. But I want to hear what she has to say, because as, as you guys saw in the beginning, she's talking about she's the first woman president of the European Parliament. She's going to make sure the next 20 years, uh, she, it, you don't have to wait for the next 20 years. And now she's going to go into the LGBTQ. This is important, guys, so that you understand how the the biggest, super, one of the biggest superpowers in the world actually thinks. Like this is the thought process in these institutions. And I, I've been to Brussels and I was studying with these people who are now working in these institutions. So trust me when I say these people are delusional and they have no, uh, no, no real touch with reality. But let's just go and continue with the interview. And I'm just going to add to the stream again my screen. Let's go. But it is not just about me. It is not only about image. It's now about making sure that the equality we work for and we represent is taken out of this parliament and also implemented in different member states so that people looking into this parliament from outside can see in this parliament something that they can also do. What did she just say? She said, like, because she's a first woman president, she's going to impose that on the other member states. Let's say you have Poland or Slovakia, which are quite traditional countries, and she will ensure that we follow the same guidelines. So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a female president or a prime minister, but uh, having it sort of not mandated, but uh, pushed down the throats of people, it's kind of drag. But this is just the beginning, guys. I'm just giving you really nothing. This is just a taste of what's going to come. And this happened yesterday, I think, or today. So this is fresh news. I'm not sure any Muslims are talking about it. So let's go. You are also the first Maltese president of a European institution. On this, Vasco Medeiras on LinkedIn would like to know how you feel about it. 
Well, first of all, I thank Vasco. He's not uh, the first one uh, to ask me this question. I come from uh, an island uh, in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea, uh, a very proud uh, island uh, and also one that worked very hard to join the European Union and be an equal partner uh, around the table uh, with so many other countries bigger uh, than Malta, but that also have recognized the fact have you guys heard about Malta? It's like this tiny island. I've never been there, but yeah, would love to. That we have values uh, and rights uh, that we all share, and it is those that we fought for in my generation when we uh, engaged in uh, in a battle at the time to join the European Union. What values? What are you talking about? That meant that those rights have to continue to be protected, and that's what matters actually uh, also to the citizens of my country when they look at the European Union and everything it represents. Today, uh... I think in the uh, one of the last polls, the engagement for electing officials in the European Parliament from Slovakia actually was like 13% or something around 13 or 15%. So only that many people actually vote in elections in this European Parliament. In norm normal national elections, you have about 50-60% of people voting, but for the European Parliament, no one identifies with that that much. So, But anyways, I just don't want to drag this on, but it's really interesting. So let's continue watching what she's going to say about equality and how she plans on doing it. Uh, at the Parliament, uh, Europe a new public opinion survey was released also to measure the sentiment of people on the work of the European Parliament. And uh, public health was one of the main topics, the, actually the priority number one that COVID. citizens think that the, the Parliament should address. What is your, it's also fueled by the pandemic, of course, but what is your assessment of the, of, uh, the management of this pandemic uh, by the EU? And uh, what should be done, you think, uh, to tackle future crises? Yeah, I think uh, the, these kind of surveys where we tap into citizens' concerns and listen to them as to what they want the European Parliament to do are some of the most effective tools that we have uh, that we need to use and respond to. And as you said, the pandemic uh, has led... That's a no. Actually, not an answer at all. Because most Europeans, most European citizens don't actually understand what the European Parliament is doing. And what's the job of the European Parliament in the whole legislative process? Uh, the video sound is very low, my friend. Okay, can you guys hear the sound of the video or is it really low? Let me know if it's very low and I will try to improve it. So let me know. How's the sound? Write me a text. Anyways, I'll continue and hopefully if, if the sound is really bad, then we'll just do it some other time. But basically, what was she saying? She was saying about the public health, that they do these surveys right across the EU. But actually, I think the biggest problem with the EU is that it's so distant from its citizens that most people don't even know what's happening. Very low, okay. That's the video. That's or is it my audio as well? Let me know because I will need to change stuff then. All right. Maybe I'll do I'll do some other stuff and uh stream from Facebook because 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 uh it's not working. So guys, we're going to watch it on Facebook. Uh, let me try to share it now. All right. You guys can see and hear it. We'll do everything to ensure that no more 20 years will pass for there to be uh, another woman. But it is not just about me. It is not only about image. It's now about making sure that the equality we work for and we represent is taken out of this parliament and also implemented in different members. Can you guys hear this? People looking into this parliament. Can you guys hear this? Did you hear the, the stream? Let me know. Much better. Thank you. Okay, awesome. So we're just going to continue. Probably skip the question about 
government from outside Hospitals. can see in this parliament something that they can offer. Uh, to people, analyzing their concerns, understanding that we join forces, whoever lives uh, close to the sea and can, in, so that we really rethink where we get our energy from, rethink how we're going to make sure that there are no um, big gaps in the in the accessibility and no. Okay. So the third priority for the citizens, according to this uh, same survey, uh, for the parliament to tackle. What do you think? Uh, talk to us about the role that the EU can play in tackling these issues. Uh, first of all, we just mentioned legislation. You are so addressed. Which issues? After the pandemic, new sectors of society have become even more and more includes social measures. This could include institution is slowly try, is tra starting to come out of a very difficult couple of people who commented on, on our posts. Uh, you also have continuously delivered very bold statements, and I quote, uh, to against those who deny rights to the LGBTIQ community. But despite the freedom... There we go. This is what I wanted to find. We enjoy not every LGBTIQ person living in the EU uh enjoys the same rights as in for example your home country malta which is has one of the most progressive lgbtiq laws in europe so what do you think the parliament can do to 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 promote more inclusive legislation why is this even a question why does the guy assumes that we want to do this and the parliament should even do something about this i mean this is pretty sad but let's let's hear what she has to say I tell you something, the first thing I worked on in this parliament when I arrived nine years ago as a member was an anti-homophobia um, roadmap uh, for uh, the European Parliament and the European Union. I must tell you that if I had known then from 2013 the advances we would make specifically because of resolutions and recommendations made in this parliament by big majorities uh, of members coming from all political groups, I would not have believed it. Today, I think that it is thanks also to a, a, a very bold generation of politicians that have broken barriers in their member states and said, if I have fought so much for my rights to be equal to those in other member states, then I expect my politicians and my representatives to deliver on that. There are, of course, certain areas where things fall within the competence of member states, but this, huh? this European Parliament has been very, very vocal also in making sure, for example, when there was the LGBTIQ free zones in Poland, we were the institution that adopted an extremely strong resolution condemning that black backsliding of rights uh, in Poland at that, at that specific, specific. Exactly. So what happened is that basically now there's she's saying it takes courage for someone to stand up for the lgbt or for for people with these progressive values however it doesn't take any courage every company that i worked for or every company that you need to work for has to comply with the lgbt standards nowadays it is one of the main frameworks for gender equality you have the gender equality you have the lgbtq minority that you have to respect then you can't even say something opposite. Maybe like a Christian can something can say something and he, it sounds strange, but most of the people are on board with this program. So that's kind of sad. So you can see how the society is changing. And what happened in Poland, basically they said that like, we don't want this stuff here. And they really went against the EU. And what happened, they took a couple of months for EU to pass resolutions and basically force Poland to stop with their anti-LGBT laws so that they could benefit from the partnership with the European Union because they are part of it. However, you can see this problem with uh, these countries that we are, like Poland, Hungary, Czech Republic, Slovakia. We have these more traditional values. I wouldn't maybe mention Czech Republic there, but uh, you know, traditional Christian values, and they are in total opposite to to these uh, progressive values. But it's just, uh, you can see the programming of, of these people. There are 750 members of parliament, just so you know. Most of them, most of them are on board with this program. And so when she says it takes courage, no, 
it's actually the opposite. It takes courage to stand up to this and to even question, okay, why are we doing this? Why do we need to make these, uh, this, this group of people equal? And by the way, why did we even make it a group of people? What if those people didn't want to be in a group? I know some gay people, personally, who don't want to associate with the LGBT movement because it's connected to the social movement. So is it possible that the LGBT doesn't actually represent majority of gay people or majority of lesbians or whatever? And that gay people don't want to be associated with transgenders, right? So yeah, that's that's my thing. Uh, let me see some comments because I see some, some crazy stuff. I believe democracy is European invention. We're proud of it. Why are you proud of it? No one is forcing you to put the gun to your TV. They are. They are forcing. Look at Poland. What happened? So if you if we decide as a country that yeah we don't want to we don't share the same values. European Union, Union is not a he hegemonic powerhouse. So let's say you have countries where, which are more liberal, and then you have countries which are more conservative. And so what do you do with those countries? Like if Poland says, like, no, we don't want any LGBT laws and abortion is legal, do you force them to obey by, the, by your laws, even though they are European? So what do you do? You have this clash. So you have to force these countries which are still conservative into abiding by your rules so you're saying no one is forcing you yes you are you're putting restrictions you're you're not gonna give them donations from european funds poland will not receive money if they don't comply with the lgbt that's the fact anyways let's watch further what's uh, what's going to happen Yeah, but you're saying if you don't like what the majority likes, you just move east. So if the majority decides that we want to kill all the Jews, would you be on board with that? Do you think majority is the best way to rule the country? Do you think the best people are ruling the country if majority decides Donald Trump can become a president of the United States. Do you think he's the most qualified to run the country? Is the majority always the best to decide? Or is there maybe another way of ruling the country possible with some minority instead of everyone having the equal vote? What do you think? I'm just saying. But anyways, let's keep watching. I like the discussion. Moment, and of course, it takes you say bold, but it also takes a responsibility. We are elected not just to to say things that are you know comfortable or easy to say. Sometimes you get elected also to do things that are difficult, that are unpopular, so to speak. Not in this area, but in other areas. If we have a responsibility to making sure that human rights are seen and observed everywhere, that you have the freedom to love who you want to love Why? and live where you want to live. Across what the What's that? What's that got to do with anything? Human rights are observed everywhere. Well, who defines the human rights? Who defined human rights in the 1940s or 50s? Was it the majority of the world? Or was it a selected group of people who, who created these human rights? But, you know, these are the, you have to go back to the basics. You have to go to the foundations. What's going on, guys? There's no moral basis. Best minds never join politics. Well, it depends. I mean, of course, you can't join politics forever because you would have to give up something. But anyways, let's continue watching uh, this woman. And uh, yeah, you can see the, the programming. And 
it's exactly what's what's uh, what we've been talking about this is not made up these people really think like that like we need to protect the human rights so if people let's say even outside of european union i saw a resolution condemning abortions abortion ban in texas or maybe girls in afghanistan don't have enough freedom so we need to go there and we need to invade the country we need to kill them because that justifies now they can have more freedom and they can uh, express their freedom because personal freedom is the value that's above every other value here how crazy is that right how crazy is that why would your personal freedom would be higher than let's say your responsibility to your family why your expression let's say sexual expression or whatever you you want to express is the highest form of value that you can do i don't know we should really think about this stuff and let's see where it goes anyways let's continue all right our union and we have to be the ones the beacons that guarantee that indeed the fight against the gender inequality and discrimination has also been other of your closest to political concern and this is also a priority for young people so what would be your um, ideal equality policy? you can see how fake these interviews are like these are people who went to school like me to study international relations and they've been indoctrinated with this dogma but um, i don't know it just seems weird anyways gender equality let's listen well for me is that where i see inequality this european parliament needs to act uh, look at this statement where i see inequality this european parliament parliament has to act so essentially you have two values you have equality and you have freedom so you want to maximize freedom for the most of the people in the european union but you also want to maximize equality However, these values are contradictory. So at some point, let's say I want to express my freedom as a Muslim. But, you know, it, it conflicts, it contradicts some of the values. So what do you do then? Like my freedom of speech now talking against this can be a problem, right? So I don't know. What does she think? And this is in all areas. Uh, we see, for example, still that women get paid much less than men um, across. Yes, but why? The European Union, in some cases, better than others, and in some cases, much worse than others. This European Parliament has been very vocal uh, in that area, also by being an example. One of the things that I have committed to, for example, is to make sure that even within uh, the administration of this parliament you have as much equality and pluralism between genders and political representation that My matters God. also and reflects the proportional representation of this house because that's how you have to take decisions not only by preaching but to do them um uh, uh, inside uh, inside your own house and of course i get asked a lot by journalists but are you going to do that everywhere and my answer is very clear and unequivocal i will take this position in every single member state in every city i go in the european union we got many questions about this. There's no way to stop this. If you have this line of thinking, you can never stop this pursuit of utopian equality and freedom because essentially you never get equality. You can never get pure equality in a society. It's impossible. So this is a dream that people have, but there are many, many differences uh, that prevent equality which are biological which are economical there's many differences that can that can never be full equality you would have to have let's say for complete freedom you would have to have anarchy as a system and for because why do you then stop at let's say the state level why not just completely empower the individual beyond the state beyond the law and then with equality well why am i my why my paycheck is not the same as the ceo why does he have more money well let's just make the paycheck all the same and let's let's do the communism again so you can see the equality it doesn't it doesn't work that well anyways let's continue sexual and reproductive rights and health 
what it, what's Parliament's position on this? On this, uh, I can continue just where I left off. The Parliament's position is. But why the, why is she saying the Parliament's position? I mean, she's the president of the Parliament, but there's seven hundred and fifty people, right? Does she represent them all? I don't know. Extremely clear. The rights have to be um, enjoyed and promoted any, everywhere. And that is the position that I will promote as European Parliament president. That is what I committed to. And that is why uh, there are at the moment negotiations on the so-called Simone Veil Pact that seeks to promote rights, but also bring member states together, closer together, um, keeping in mind member states' confidence on this matter. But on this, my position is clear. My position is that is that, is that of the European Parliament. More than half of EU citizens stated in, the, in this public survey that they want Parliament to have a stronger role in the EU. Uh, on this, Lian on Instagram asked what can be done to strengthen the, the Parliament's role on the EU? We haven't... Anyways, I probably don't want to go through the whole thing, but uh, I just wanted to show you that this is what's happening, and this person was just elected. Now, I'm not really sure what sort of power can she have on the U union because technically European Parliament has is like a legislative body and there's commission which has the authority but it's not looking good guys <laughs> it's not looking good and it's gonna get worse in 10 to 20 years there's no way to stop this because these people these people cannot wake up these people cannot recognize that what they're trying to achieve is impossible what would you suggest to them like what would you suggest uh, because any change in society will take years or personally decades so what do you think what can people do who who don't want to embrace this new world that it's going to be built in europe but also across the world because this cannot be stopped if you embrace this line of thinking you always have to expand and you have to impose it on other people what will you do? What will you do? Anyways, let me check out some of the crazy comments. This life was really random, and I will. I know it wasn't the best, but uh, let me check. And religious people should not seek guidance from atheists. Okay, atheists don't even know how to live their lives. I was an atheist. I could live my life. But it's pretty difficult. Why would I move? Why would I move? I, I'm European. I'm European. I was born here. What? How does Europe get values? These are not European values. You're wrong. 200 years ago, were these European values? No. Where, where did these values come from? Did they come from something, some other system? 30 years ago, these values didn't exist. Yes, overall value of equality and freedom existed forever. But these new world type of stuff, pseudo, whatever you want to call them, values, they never existed in Europe. So I'm not moving out. And that's my right. I'm going to change those values by changing the minds of people simple i'm gonna move no one is telling people what to do if the majority doesn't agree yeah but i'm the minority so you're gonna tell me what to do so that's the problem they are not european values they're globalist values that's right i'm not sure if you're from europe but that's exactly right they never, these were never european values European values are based on freedom, yes. And European values are equality, yes. But they have nothing to do with relating them to, the, to these uh, sexual things and uh, these moral declines in the society because there was always also value of religion or value of morality, which now doesn't exist. So morality, I mean, more like family structure and stuff. So... That's kind of it. Okay, Europeans like them and accept them. No. No, they don't like it. Most of the Europeans don't like these values. Where did you get that from? Most people don't actually believe in these values. 
How can you believe in something that's made up? That there is no scientific evidence for. Not even scientific. There's no evidence for that. And it's not scientific, of course, as well. But it's pretty crazy how delusional these people are. And no one is speaking out against them because most people try to get a job at EU because they make money. They make money together. So it's kind of sad. Yeah, people don't even vote, man. Like 10 to 13% of people, that's not even voting. Yo, man. No, you're saying I'm European, I live in Europe, and then you're saying we're proud of it. No, you're proud of it. You are proud of it. We are not proud of it. I have nothing against democracy at this point in Europe. I think Europe needs democracy because otherwise it cannot organize itself. But I don't think it's the best system. Why would you assume that? You can never get the best system, right? Based on your ideology of always progressing somewhere. So what's up? If the majority agrees, this is how it goes here. <laughs> yeah, if the majority is stupid, then yeah, we got a problem. Yeah, I'm live, dude. I am here live. Ah. Guys, you went you were really fighting in the comments, right? Islam's the fastest growing religion in You know, I missed uh, Islam. Oh, uh, not Islam. <laughs> I missed Muslims. I was 5 days in the mountains uh, just hiking it up. And I really missed uh, kind of engaging also with you guys and then also engaging with just, uh, you know, just mosques and everything because that's the way it is. But yeah. How's your evening? Don't fight in the comments, guys. Be nice to each other. Democracy is a curse for third world countries because the elite is always for the power. Exactly. I mean, it's sad that people can see this. Well, and here's to the point. Only thing you can do is to change people's minds because you can see the it's too rotten at the top of any country, Muslim or non-Muslim. You got to change people's minds and hearts, bro. And the way you do it is with da'wah. And it's with, um, you know, sharing Islam and sharing the message of Tawheed. Because, I don't know, this world is going to some place where I don't know how it's going to look like in 20, 30 years. And I'm sure if I have kids, they'll survive somehow, inshallah. But it's not going to be easy and it's not going to be pretty. And it's getting more crazy every day. And you know what? All we can do is to stay strong because there's 1.8 billion Muslims. It's not a small number. And if we get together, we can still just keep in uh, keep keep the societies that you guys built. I'm I was never living in a Muslim society, but you guys have the infrastructure. You guys have the mosques. Everything is set up. Keep that. Don't let it go away because they're coming for you. Anyways, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. And if you never heard of her, now you know there's this president of European Parliament and she has this ideology. And it's quite, quite frankly, frankly, it's crazy. It's insane. So that's what it is. They speak about lives and choices while they are responsible for the death of 300 million infants. Yeah, true. But those are not not people. Those are just like, you see that this is the conflict with the freedom. <laughs> like, I have a freedom for my body, right? I want to. I I have a freedom to to choose to to not carry this baby and kill it. 
But what about that baby? That's a potential life that's forming. If you would let it go, it would actually grow to a fully human being. Just because you kill it a few months before it actually grows doesn't mean this, this wasn't a life. And I don't know. I mean, it's pretty crazy. Because it's selfish. Mostly it's selfish because of economical reasons. Of course, there are cases which allow it, but I'm not going to get into that. Of course, it's all populism, dude. This is what we learned. I, I studied politics. I did many campaigns uh, for political groups. And you always try to find the, the hottest topic and try to have the crazy, crazy position around that topic. So you find COVID-19 vaccines and then you just talk about it and you attract people and then you sell them a dream and you do nothing. And that's kind of how it works if you want to get elected. And then when you get elected, you're done. You don't have to do anything. Before you go, maybe one year before you leave the office, you give out some money in pensions and that's it. Of course, you have to do something. You have to do something. But to get elected, you just have to promise people as much stuff as they want. <sighs> Anyways. Well. It's not equality if you believe in God. You're crazy then. Anyways, thank you guys for tuning in. And let's stay in touch, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. And never give up. The beard is growing. You can see. It's, it's going. It's going the Salaf way. Anyways, see you guys. Inshallah. And uh, yeah, tomorrow I'm dropping a podcast with Think Revert. So... Stay tuned for that. It's going to be awesome. Assalamu alaikum.